Welcome, welcome, Monet Cafe art family. This is artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm bringing you a product reveal video. I'm so excited. Today, we're going to talk about these beautiful pan pastels. If you've never tried them, this is a video you're going to love because I'm going to give a lot of education explaining all of these different products, and I was blessed to have the co- uh, inventor of pan pastels send me some of their beautiful pastels and all these products now I had some pastels pan pastels before um, I only had a limited supply though and they come in individual little palettes almost like a little makeup thing and you screw them on top of each other and they also have these little containers you put on the bottom to keep your applicator sponges and pads in um, now I had never had one of the products I'm going to show you here which is going to make it much easier for me to use these and again I'm excited I'm not going to do a painting in this video this is more about product education but I'm very excited because I really had such a limited supply I didn't get a chance to really play around them with them and have fun but I've already figured out how to uh, make that work better for me that was the pan pastel tray like a palette tray that's amazing here it is again and I have all these new colors look at this it's beautiful even some of those uh, I think they're called pearl colors instead of iridescent they were at the top there and this is a neat little thing it's called a colorless blender we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute so this is going to be very fun and new uh, and, uh, for a lot of you anyway but let's go ahead and talk about these products now you've obviously noticed that these they are soft pastels but they're not in stick format so we need to have a way to apply them and that's what these knives and covers are used for it's like a palette knife but you have these neat little sponge covers you put on a round a flat an oval and a point that are for your different painting needs and you know you can just play around and see which ones are the best for you or a combination now they can be reordered if you run out um, so that's a, a nice handy thing and they do they last a little while and and there's a way to clean them that we'll talk about too now they also have a different type of, of applicator here and it too comes with uh, little nibs or tips you can apply if one of them you know wears out or whatever so they're really neat and kind of fun now there's handheld applicators too and they come in different shapes I believe one is a wedge a point a round and I don't know what the other one is called there but anyway these are handheld ones and they make another one that's larger uh, that is a round yeah this one's the round I think it's called yes and uh, and you hold these to apply larger areas obviously these are bigger so it's going to be so much fun playing around with these but this is my little blender that I use you may have seen in some of my other videos my son and daughter-in-law started a product that is actually a makeup brush and I started using these brushes to blend with and I'm going to try using these with the pan pastels I actually already did I cheated tried it it, it worked great so what I want to do they have this wonderful book I read through this book and I was amazed at the education you get from this one book. So that's what I'm going to do with you guys. I'm going to read through the book. Now I was very excited to see this because I instantly recognized this painting as one from my very dear friend and artist Deborah Secor, amazing pastel artist. This painting was done 100% with pan pastels and it also happens she's a member of our Monet Cafe Facebook group and she I believe put this painting in our current monthly theme of sunsets and sunrises. So uh, this was another very useful uh, material here that's a brochure and or a a pamphlet of sorts and it has so much education in here and actually little exercises and worksheets for you to use to become a better artist and to learn a little bit more about pan pastels so get ready we're gonna have fun and dive into this and learn a lot more about pan pastels and I can't wait to get to a painting but first let's start learning okay so here's the catalog and it also has art techniques in it so it's it's very informative and educational. Plus, I like the way the page turn sounds are. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> anyway, um, so this is page one, and I really like that they give a little bit of their story. You know, especially, you know, in Monet Cafe, we're all about knowing each other, especially in Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. And we're just a family, you know, so it's really neat to hear the backstory of how companies start and their ideas. So I'm going to read a little bit of the brochure. Actually, I'm probably going to read a lot of it, but uh, I think 
it's more fun to learn this together. I mean, you can order the brochure yourself and I'll try to put the links in the about section where you can go to the website and look at it just like I am and uh, and go ahead and get started in ordering if you want to. So, uh, so let me just give you a little bit of their story and a little more information. So the idea behind the development of Pan Pastel was to create a dry color medium, you know, like soft pastels, that would work like a fluid paint. You know, with sticks, we're typically just um, restricted to using the sticks, so this is going to work more like painting. We saw that the pastel medium hadn't changed from the stick format for hundreds of years. And before that, going back thousands of years, humans had to use raw pigments to draw paint. You know, thousands of years ago, you just had to find some pigment, you know, to draw or paint with it. So we decided, now that's going to be the um, inventors in this picture here, Lad Forsline, I hope I'm saying his name right, and Bernadette Ward. She's the one that I dealt with, and she's wonderful, very helpful. And I appreciate all the information that she gave me. So they decided to develop a material that retained the characteristics that make the pastel medium special. And we know on this channel that pastels are just amazing. We, we uh, recruit so many new pastel addicts in our group all the time. And uh, it's like anything. You, you got to learn and, and experiment. But there's so many beautiful things about pastels, soft pastels, that aren't in other mediums and that's what's neat about these pan pastels too it's still soft pastels but the neat thing is its directness and purity of color and these do go on very pure and beautiful but to make it functional like a paint after much experimentation in our art studio and laboratory we developed the pan format okay so the little individual things you said I look like I said look like makeup they're called pans I was calling them little palettes but it's a pan okay so the pan format changes everything making the colors function like a dry velvety paint this brings many benefits for example the artist can now mix pastel colors together for the first time you know how I'm always talking on our channel about how it's we we mix colors in a way but not like regular painting so with pan pastels you can mix them uh, definitely better than you can with stick format so that's going to be really fun we knew the owners again or the inventors that pastelist would be immediately attracted to pan pastel as the colors offer many advantages for pastel painting we also wanted to offer painters who normally use wet colors a dry medium that would deliver many of the same paintable qualities that they're familiar with so this is going to be a great way for artists who are used to other um, mediums uh, acrylic oil watercolor uh, they're going to feel a little more comfortable, perhaps, with pan pastel and still experience the wonderful benefits of the regular soft pastel medium. So the owners again, or uh, inventors again, are saying our job was to develop the materials and make them available to artists, knowing they would in instinctively know how to use them in their work. We were right. Artists are taking pan pastel in so many exciting creative directions. Now, I know in our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook, we do have artists who are uh, using pan pastels because I have had, uh, I've seen your posts and your questions. And again, like that little card said that they provided, I was so excited to see that my, my friend that I've never met in person, but the amazing pastel artist, Deborah Secor, was the one who did that painting on their little uh, um, card that they gave. And there's also, um, hopefully it'll get to it in this brochure, there's also a little link where you can get a free little demo where Deborah Secor did a pan pastel 100% pan pastel with that beautiful painting that she had on that card so I know for a fact that um, that pastel artists love this product so I'm excited to do a painting but let's go through this brochure a little bit more so um, so they do that this is just loaded with information here but this is going to tell a little bit over here just the uh, describing the pan format okay so it's in these little plastic trays okay and these if you don't have the palette that I just got for the first time the little the little plastic holders that they're in they screw together in little stacks now I found that that was um, 
a little bit challenging not it's not hard to unscrew them but it's time consuming and so the palette is going to be really great for me I'm, I'm excited about that but the benefit is that it has instant color if you're an artist from other mediums there's no prep or drying we know that already as pastel artists how the benefit of pastels I love how they don't dry up on you they're always there waiting for you when you come back you don't have to mix them so that is a wonderful benefit um, and we're going to find out about how they can be mixed together with this format and um, mixed media friendly yes for sure um, you know I, t I do mixed media stuff all the time using pastels with all kinds of different mediums and the same thing with these again they're, they're soft pastels okay they're just in a different um, format and functional packaging like I said this is probably going to be nice for people who have a little bit of an issue with the pastel dust these definitely I know from experience don't have as much of a dust issue flying around all over the place and they're highly pigmented boy they go on brilliant they're so great okay this is a beautiful pan pastel painting from this artist and okay let's go to page two on this page you're going to see all of the different color choices and the pastel colors that they provide and it's really not very different from ordering pastels um, colors from any other type of soft pastel so um, and also too I know sometimes with some soft pastels you've got so many different colors to choose from it gets like overwhelming and these have a really really good supply of colors for you and which should be good for any uh, painting needs landscaping portraits you know whatever so um, this is the uh, uh, I was mentioning in the little intro part of this video they have the metallics and the pearlescence and I got some little samples of each of those so I can't wait to paint and uh, now also to um, oh yeah I got a little bit of this too we'll talk about this in a minute as well now this is the little palette I think it might show it on one of these other pages that I'm excited about that I'm gonna have a palette this is gonna make it much more user friendly for me to just get the palette of, of pan pastels and go to work instead of unscrewing all the little individual things so I'm excited they have one for 10 colors and they have one for 20 colors you get them empty okay and then you put yours in it all right so let's go to the next page now these are the tools that I talked about a little bit in the intro there and they have the knives like a palette knife if you're familiar with painting with wet mediums there's a palette knife and they have the little covers okay these are the little sponges that are going to um, pick up the pastel and apply it to your surface so we've got the round the flat the oval and the point now Bernadette was um, very helpful in, in explaining to me I said I, I couldn't get a good point sometimes with these pastels and she described to, or explained to me that um, there are still certain things that sticks are better for and that pan pastels are not always meant to use hundred percent pan pastels but use them with your other soft pastels so if you need that fine edge or you need sky holes is something I think that sticks are probably going to be better for or uh, grasses you know use your sticks on top of these but I'm excited because I think these are going to be great for underpainting so um, and and many other uses so these are your tools okay and there's other tools too which are um, oh this is neat it shows you a little uh, looks like you have a little video here again I'm going to provide a link to to this so you can find this yourself and it shows you exactly how to do everything this is very informative uh, explains us a little bit about the sponge and uh, these are the handheld ones the round the flat the wedge the point and these are the larger ones I'm thinking I would do this for just large areas of uh, color I'm gonna get down from underpainting or something uh, the big oval this the angle slice flat angle slice round and the round okay so these are these are your tools for applying them all right let's go to the next page now this is cool because it gives you the basic techniques of how to use these you can go through this and learn basically how to use these little palette knives and also how you can clean them um, all you really need is a paper towel to wipe your little sponge off okay and I've done this so I know that it absolutely works uh, the only thing that I've found is sometimes if I use a very coarse pastel surface you know I love sanded surfaces it's going to um, that's why they allow you to order more of these little sponges because you know it gets a little abrasive on it but um, but for one painting you definitely one of these is going to work just fine and um, and you can always replace them which is great 
So you're going to apply it just like paint to paper uh, or your working surface and reload your color as needed. And again, the neat thing about, I can't wait to experiment with this more, about mixing colors like paint to create your intermediate colors. See, they, they took just these two colors um, and you can see they got a gradation of the in-between colors from there. So that's pretty cool. Palette trays we talked about. It gives you a tip to how to get them out easily. Okay, so these fit down in that little palette tray. And this is cool down here. They're erasable. So any eraser really, I usually use a kneaded eraser like they show in this picture here. But you see all these eraser possibilities down here. Even a little um, more fine point eraser, which you could just lay down a big square of color or whatever and uh, and get the eraser of your choosing and go ahead and start sketching so that's pretty cool uh, and again this shows you just all the prep that you need your paper towels your pastels your tools and your eraser and it even gives you a little bit about finishing and framing and fixing I have a lot of videos I don't fix a painting at the end most of you know that um, but I use it as a tool uh, for painting and framing is just the same as any regular pastel again these are soft pastels okay just in a different uh, way that they're um, they're not a stick okay um, all right so let's go on now color mixing this is what I was saying is kind of exciting look at this you've got these colors here that you can actually get an, an in-between color as if you were mixing acrylics or something so that's that's really really awesome I like how they described this part right here this is kind of how they um, have created their colors you've got a permanent red okay and then they have what's called a tint and all a tint is is the pure color that red plus white now you know if you've been painting long you know if you add white to red you're gonna get pink which is that now their other uh, thing they add to their permanent red same as above is black if you add some black you're gonna get a deeper richer red um, more of a I don't sepia rich color there and then if you add more black to it you're gonna get your dark dark you know I talk about want to have some dark darks so pan pastel does have some really good dark darks as well and uh, that this gives you an education on um, more about layering okay and th this is for uh, if you want something that's more transparent colors you see how you can see through these would be for your more opaque colors and uh, easy cleanup they really are easy to clean up you just wipe them off with a sponge or a piece of paper towel okay because I have noticed when I I, I get kind of crazy when I start painting and I'll, I'll go from the red to the yellow to the whatever and uh, and they get you know the the surface of the pan can get kind of dirty so you just wipe it off you know and it comes off real easily now this is a little bit more about their pearl mediums and um, this is what I was excited about this colorless blender I have not used this before and it's really interesting because typically you know if you've got a red um, and you add white to it with pastels. Uh, I mean, red and white, you know, it makes pink. But this colorless blender is not a white. Okay, it looks white here, but I'm assuming it's not a white. It allows that the color can be extended or diluted and become more transparent, but the color itself remains the same. You see how this is still more red? Okay, it's just a little bit more translucent. But if you add white, it's white. So this is going to be a neat little tool here, and I can't wait to try it. All right, now, this is cool too. You can do subtractive colors, kind of like what I was describing for about erasing uh, before. And um, you just lay down, see the sponge that's for the large areas. You want to lay down a large amount of color. And um, and it's kind of like, not really a, neg a negative painting, subtractive, like it says. You're going to subtract out your lines. And uh, that would be a fun little way to do some sketching or some drawing. So that's just another neat thing you can do. And they've got a neat little example of an artist and uh, uh, this is so, I don't have my glasses on. Charlena Wood and uh, just an example of how she's used them. It also gives you a tip of how you wanna change your line weight, um, how you use the tools to change the weight of the line from thick to thin this is really neat I don't often do image transfers because I like to you know just draw myself but uh, if you have something that you're doing and it would just be handy to um, be able to reproduce this drawing onto a surface whatever your drawing is this dove for example you just basically turn this paper over apply a big old swatch of the pan pastel with one of your sponges okay flip it over 
and use any tool, whatever point, sharp point edge you have, to draw it onto your surface. Peel it up and, you know, say this is pastel paper or whatever you have down there. Um, that's It's going to transfer. So that's really neat. I didn't even know that you could do that. Uh, and this is another example of an artist who's actually an oil painting artist. And he loves to use the pan pastel to uh, do his preliminary work with the pastel and I understand if you read through this I'm not going to read the whole thing I totally understood what he was saying about the advantages of using this as an almost like an underpainting uh, for oil painting work so lots of uses this is going to give you some interesting um, and uh, uh, helpful tips on different techniques you know I use underpaintings a lot I'm going to use that one for sure this is neat um, because every time I should click on this or point at it it lightens it up so I have to quit doing that but I talk a lot about um, in value typically your darkest values are in the foreground at the lower part of this part and your lighter values are going to be as the as things go back in the distance your skies and things far away so it's probably a neat idea and I've never done this just to do a underpainting that has a gradation like this it's kind of a neat little way to start so pan pastel looks like they're going to be great for doing that and oh here's Deborah's painting again um, great for sketching you're just going to use your little uh, palette knives um, and and just sketch out your general piece you know that's pretty cool um, instead of using a stick uh, another uh, point about mixing and applying them uh, practice with simple studies and this is the part I was telling you about it says Deborah Secor 100% pan pastel this painting is in our Monet Cafe art group you know if you're on in that group in Facebook you know that we have a monthly theme and the monthly theme for July and we're almost done with July is has been sunrises and sunsets and Deborah Secor who's a very accomplished pastel artist we're so blessed to have her in our group she uh, submitted this painting and I was like oh I knew that painting right away but um, but this is a painting that um, pan pastel allows you to get this free online workshop okay so you can get that by visiting this the links that I'm going to show you and you can really watch Deborah and how she creates this painting that's very cool again more I'm not going to read through everything it's great with mixed media uh, they work well with all kinds of different mediums and again other mixed medium uh, oh this was cool about digital hand coloring if you do any photography work black and white and you want to do a hand coloring uh, these are great for coloring your black and white photos okay so that's pretty neat and you can read all about this let's see how many more pages we have we got 28 pages to this book but um, um, uh, more about oh stenciling you can use them for stencils uh, they work on different surfaces you know I typically work I, I actually work on watercolor paper a lot and do my you know that's a neat idea how about using pan pastels on watercolor paper and then applying the clear liquid gesso like we do for the sanded part that would be really neat and of course we use sanded surfaces a lot so they work on all surfaces and let's see oh these are the different sets that you can get so they do sell them in sets you got a starter set here and you've got 10 color sets you guys can read through all of this 20 color sets um, where you can actually get the palette here and some tools uh, so you guys can check that out oh let me go back here a landscape set shades extra darks I mentioned to uh, Bernadette I needed more darks and I got those and the metallics the pearlescence oh look at that oh that's just so beautiful I know you, you guys in Monet Cafe art group I and I'm Monet Cafe YouTube channel you're just as special as Monet Cafe art group on Facebook I just get to talk with you more when you're in our Facebook group okay because we all communicate together so if I sound like I'm talking to you when I'm doing these videos um, that's because I, I do get to communicate with you and and you know we always get excited when somebody shares their photos of their new pastels it's just we're like color freaks you know so this just excites me that's just so beautiful there's the pearlescence and the metallics um, so here's the different kits um, and then you've got okay we'll just flip through some of this stuff okay so we're done here with all the pages but uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that other educational little pamphlet brochure that they had which is really cool so let's get to that I was really excited to see that Pan Pastel provided this information to make you a better painter and they use this artist Anders Zorn to give an instructional um, type of information on how to use a limited color palette to produce uh, great 
paint works you know and if you notice up there in the top right where it says materials it's got the yellow ochre the permanent red black white and phthalo blue so you've got your primary colors your yellow your red your blue and um, and it goes in and describes how we're gonna do a little worksheet to make you better and these are the different samples of worksheets which include the Zorin palette worksheet values worksheet temperature worksheet value studies add bonus blue those might not make sense until I show you what they are and here they are so basically you've got this little worksheet where you actually add the pan pastel colors to help you understand all of the different lessons on the one the two the three the four I'm not going to go through all of these but I am actually going to do these myself but I wanted to go ahead and show you the different worksheets. This is the Zorn worksheet number one. Number two is on values. You know I am huge on values. So if this is going to help you grow as an artist, that's awesome. Worksheet number three is on color temperature. It's a temperature worksheet. So that's going to really be beneficial. A lot of you ask these questions all the time on our channel. So, and this, I didn't show you all of the worksheets, but this is the back of the brochure. And again, the little resources, techniques, how to find pan pastels and uh, learn more about them. So this was just so fun. So I hope I may have encouraged you to try this product. And for the beginner, uh, use what you have for now. But if you want to try some of these, maybe try some in that limited palette and, uh, and get a feel for them. And of course, get all of the free resources that Pan Pastel provides. So anyway, guys, this was a fun video. I can't wait to come back and bring you a painting using these beautiful pastels. So thanks for joining me in Monet Cafe. Find our Facebook group, Monet Cafe Art Group. And also, please subscribe to this channel if you want to keep more videos like this coming your way. Thanks so much and happy, happy painting.